Welcome to another episode of the Blue Crew, a New York Rangers podcast on the Believe Podcast Network. I'm your host, Johnny Lazarus, joined by my good friend, Cody Frankel. Cody? Did I, I didn't even say co-host. Good friend and co-host, Cody Frankel. Both. Uh, what, we, we saw each other last night at the Rangers-Coyotes game. Wasn't very fun, but we're not going to go into that. We we'll hugged start it out with the Rangers and Red Wings because the Jets were off last week, so Cody won't rant about God knows who. So let's just go into Ranger stuff right away, right? Like, Cody, what, what do you got here? Uh, Rangers at Red Wings, father's trip. What are your thoughts? Uh, I thought it was crazy um, that, you know, it was two to two through two. And then like a six goal unanswered third is just like unheard of. Uh, I don't know where it came from because that game had all the makings of like a three to two final in like the last three minutes of the game or something like that. Uh, I thought it was pretty awesome. You know, seeing VC obviously have a big night. Mika had a big night. Gautier had a big night. And, and it's good seeing... Uh, you know, players perform that aren't the the core four or core five guys that we see every game. I know I just said Mika, but, you know, we we often rely very heavily on Mika, Panarin, Fox, Kreider, and uh, I guess I guess now you can say Trocek. Um, yeah, what were you – are you saying something? I just, No, I just realized we totally skipped over the Islander game. I don't know if that's on purpose or – Yeah, it's on purpose. <laughs> okay. It's on purpose, for sure. Because that was pretty – that was pretty bad. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want to touch on that real quick, we can. The only thing I'm going to say about that game is I, I don't know what's good with Igor when it comes to the Islanders. I was going to say, you said it last night. Like, y- yeah, it's you know, they're, they're, they're our kryptonite for yeah, whatever reason. But it's weird because, like, last season, I feel well, like last season played, the Islanders were an AHL team with all the COVID that's stuff. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. Like we just do not play well against them. Um, it kind of makes me a little nervous. Uh, Sorokin is obviously a good goalie. They have a really good backup goalie as well. Um, I just think we're going to need to figure it out. I mean, I I'm pretty sure we only play them like two more more, times. One one more time. One more time. So like we got to figure out a way to win that game. Um, you know, we already lost the season series against them and uh, it's, it's pretty funny actually, like we're 15, 17, 18, whatever games in, and we haven't played the devils yet. Uh, and they're wheeling and dealing. So mm-hmm. I, I'm really curious to see how we play them. You know, everybody has their own hatred for certain teams that aren't the Rangers, obviously. And for me, I grew up watching Brodeur and the devils hoist the cup. I grew up watching the penguins win a couple times. So like, those are the two teams to me that I just absolutely despise. I know some people can't stand the Islanders. I don't really care about them. They've never <laughs> done shit. Like, you know, like I wasn't, I wasn't around in the eighties and, and they haven't really done much for me. Like to me, the, the guys that just grind my gears are really the devils, the penguins, uh, hate the Bruins. And like, those are probably the three. And obviously Tampa has beaten us a couple times in playoffs. So I'm not a fan of them either, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. Do you have anything to add about the Isles game? I mean, the Isles game I thought was just you kind of sensed that they were letting it go, right? Like mm-hmm. right off the bat in that third period, the Islanders came out with so much buzz and and you just yeah. kind of felt that this one might slip away. I mean, yeah. let's be real though, that game winning goal, Wallstrom trips, I think Truba from behind, uh-huh. Andrew Lee scores right away. It was a bad, was, it was a bad trip. Yeah. There was a lot of Questionable officiating, I think, this week in Ranger games, especially the Coyotes game. Both sides, the oh officiating was gosh, horrendous. Dude. And we'll we'll get into the Coyotes game. I, I want to go one at a time, but the Islanders game itself, like, I I am, you know, if I'm being fully honest, if the Rangers and Islanders play in a playoff series, like, I'm a little concerned. Here's, I, I'm not going to go that far, and the reason I say that is because I do think this is going to be a much more well composed, like well-oiled machine when it comes to playoffs. I don't think this team has found that consistency yet. We will get into that in a little bit, but um, I'm just going to leave it there for now. But yeah, I mean, it, I wouldn't feel comfortable them playing pretty much anyone right now in yeah. the East like in, in playoffs. Um, but go, going off of that, uh, yeah, the Detroit game was great. It, it like totally gave you all the feels because you literally thought it was going to be this – grinder of a game and it just turned into a barrage of goals mm-hmm. um it was pretty awesome to see and then um did you have anything to add about detroit because i do want to get into the predators 
The Detroit game, I think, kind of speaks for itself. Um, yeah. The, Pred- the Predators yeah. game is all you because I didn't even watch. I was out so, Saturday. The so. Predators game was a classic New York Rangers absolutely domination game. Um, and, you know, Halak didn't play that. Like, he didn't play bad by any means. Just he, he played how he's been playing outside of those one or two games. Like, he had a good game. Did he have a great game? No. Should he have stopped probably one of those two goals? Yes. But he didn't. And another classic example of the Rangers significantly outplaying their opponents, but just not finding like quality shots on goal. Um, you know, they dominated in puck possession. They dominated in shots and hits and, and in every, every category, but they still lost two to one because they just weren't setting up like proper shots. And they ended the game on a four minute minor to end the game. And if you don't score, on a four minute minor to end the game and you go over five in the power play, you can't expect to win a game. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't work like that. We're going to get into it. I think from a fan question, but everyone keeps talking about how good the power play is, which it is. But in regards to the rest of the league, like it's not really that elite. Like, well, because what happens is they, they go, they have, they have a game where they go like two for three and then they have a game where they go like oh for six. So it's like, you know, I mean, the Rangers are literally the 15th best power play right now in the league. Guess guess who's fourth? <laughs> or, yeah, guess who's fourth? It's going to be some, like, weird, weird, like the Kraken? I don't know. The Arizona Coyotes have the fourth oh, best power okay. play in the league. And we watched them last night, and I, I, like, could not believe my eyes that this was the fourth best power play unit in the league. Like, it was crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I think the Rangers have had a, their fair share of games where – they've been outplaying teams and losing. Mm -hmm. Um, And it, and it just comes down to like, obviously the defense hasn't played as well as it should. Um, Aside from Adam Fox, he's really, really picked it up this week and, and, you know, he's completely back to form. Mm -hmm. Um, But I I think it's more of like, we're just not taking quality shots. I mean, even watching that predators game, that four minute minor was miserable to watch they were spending so much time trying to focus and set up like just one shot that they were wasting two and a half minutes and it was you know i feel in a situation when you're down by a goal at some point you gotta count on luck a little bit and just start firing away and 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 i'm not gonna pretend i'm a player i'm not gonna pretend i i know the analytics and you know the, the the chances and all that stuff but like from the eye test when you're down two to one and you're dominating the game and and they didn't challenge the goalie that much, but like if it's a four minute minor to end the game, I feel like you just, you just need to start firing. I mean, you have all, you just said it yourself. Like we have a great power play. You have all these guys like Kreider, Zibanejad, Panarin, like all these guys who can shoot, just shoot the puck and, and, and one might go in. I mean, in those four minutes, they might've had three shots on goal. It was like pathetic. It was bad. Mm -hmm. Well, back to your point about Foxy. He's currently second amongst defense, but in points right now, only yep. trailing Eric Carlson. Carlson. Yeah. Foxy has five goals, 14 assists in 17 games. He also was the third star of the week for the NHL. He had two goals and six. No, yeah, two goals, six assists in four games. He's on a six game point streak. So Foxy's definitely starting to light it up once again. He's going to be in the Norris discussion again this year, mm-hmm. um, you know, which is super encouraging to see. I think he's been our best skater. I, I, in the last at least seven games, I think he's been the guy that stood out the most, you know, as far as players go on yeah, the ice. I mean, totally, would you agree totally. with that? I mean, I mean, you're not wrong by any means. And, and you know, transitioning to the Coyotes game, mm-hmm. um, you yeah. saw what I did there. Yes, uh, but before you do that, I do want to read a quick ad from Bet Online, if that's okay with you. I suppose it's fine. I don't mean to interrupt, but basketball is back and bet online remains your number one source for all your sports betting needs this season you'll always find the latest odds team matchup info player news and game trends at bet online and as your continued source for all sports wagering information bet online features live betting free contests and giveaways all season long always the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports and events whether that's nfl nba nhl mma tennis boxing or even golf head to betonline.ag to join and receive your 50 percent welcome bonus with your first deposit Make sure to use promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, all caps, to receive your rewards. Bet online where the game starts. Cody, where the game the begins. Um, but yes, I, dude, the, the first 30 minutes of that game, it looked like the classic Rangers hangover game, exhausted from playing the night before, uh, looked sluggish on, on every front. Igor kept him in that game from top to bottom. He was playing really, really well. 
Uh, they got outshot 17 to three in the first period, which is, if you told me that would ever happen against the Yotes, I would mm-hmm. call you a madman. And it they didn't did even happen. get their first shot on goal until eight minutes left in the first. Yeah, it was it was really tough to watch, and I thought it was going to be a one nothing game. Yotes win, like that, mm-hmm. that's what I thought it was going to be. And then a, a, a flip switched again. And those last 30 minutes were were pretty electric from the Rangers' standpoint. Um, you know, Arizona played a little bit of a boring game, but I thought the Rangers did everything right in those last 30 minutes. Igor obviously led in that one goal. And one thing I'm learning about Igor is he is, I think he is the best goalie in the league um, right now, e- even though he's maybe like ninth or, or eighth in, you know, save percentage and so on, but he's still finding his groove and stuff like that. But one thing I've learned about him is he is just not a shutout goalie. Like no matter what happens, he will let it. He might save 45 shots, but he'll let in a goal. He might save 20 shots, but he'll let in a goal. And it, it's just like, and that's fine. I mean, if, if you know, if he's letting in one goal a game, I, I'm cool with it. But I, I'm just starting to to notice like he's really just not a shutout guy. I thought he played unbelievable last night. Unbelievable. Though. Yeah. Like, I, that's what I said. Hey, I'm I'm not discrediting it by any means. He he kept the team in the game from top to bottom made outstanding save after outstanding save after outstanding save. He actually, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. Last night, Igor had a 1.39 goal save above expected. There was one chance that I remember that stood out Clayton Keller, right in the slot. Igor made a glove. I know save. exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Igor yeah. made a glove save. Like that was a huge save in the game. The coyotes would have went up one, nothing. Um, and- and that's he made a really really nice save on Logan Kraus as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he, he was he was unreal last night. Yeah, he he played really really well. You know, the Rangers owe him a beer for sure mm-hmm. because he he played pretty outstanding. And you know who else I thought had a really really good game last night? Who who was very noticeable to me? Lafreniere, man, he had some big hits last night. He made some big plays. I think he did end up having an assist or two, well, maybe one, one assist. Um, I don't know if he did. I don't. Think maybe he did. maybe he didn't. Maybe he didn't have yeah. any assists. But um, <laughs> you know, he he played a big game and he looked really good on the ice. Uh, obviously, you know, Panarin looked good like he always does. Fox looked really really good. Um, and and yeah, I mean that's that's really all I had to say about the Yotes game before we go into the the fans <laughs> well to your point though also about the coyotes game like i don't think the flip necessarily switched i think the puck luck just kind of changed like that barkley goodrow goal the first goal of the game dude, like, that goal was sweet i thought no dude that was a terrible that was a terrible bounce for the coyotes like they rimmed the puck mm-hmm. around the boards they hit the defenseman skate came out to ingram in front and he just tried to poke the puck out of the crease and it went right to goodrow right in front like to be like, fair it was the- far side for me but that's the me too <laughs> but that, we, were, we were closer we were than i was one section away two but that's the puck look that the Rangers have needed. Like, when has that yeah. happened this year where the puck just bounces right to them and, and they bury it? It like, hasn't. You know, like they, but, but that's a game where like mm-hmm. the Rangers probably did not deserve to win, but the puck bounced their way and they found a way to win. Like, you know, it, I don't think they deserved it at all. And I actually, I was trying to come up with any excuse in the book last night for why they were playing bad. Like, UFC was at the Garden Saturday. Knicks played Sunday afternoon. Maybe the ice was shit, but like, you know, they, they, the Rangers played three games in four the nights. They were a little game, tired. That was, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, let's go into this because th- this, I feel like we're just going to rant about we, for. I, I mean, it, do you want to kick both, it off? Yeah, sure. I, it, Johnny and I both, we sat two sections away from each other and we both had some grown man like screaming at the top of his lungs, using, losing his voice, screaming profanities. And that he, both guys were with. You know, they're significant others and we think just we don't know. We think just ma- no, my the guy in front of me was for sure just making oh. like an absolute embarrassment of himself. Mm-hmm. Uh it, it's just it's just crazy. I mean, it's just I, I get the passion and I respect the passion, but God bless that woman. <laughs> <laughs> like that's all I'm yeah. gonna say. I mean, I, I'm just gonna say, like, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it is at any game, like listen, I, I think it's needed. Like I'm happy there are fans like that. It'll never, ever be me. But the guy in front of me was like screaming like, fuck the Coyotes, like ASU, like starting all these like oh, chants. The like, ASU chant? Yeah, dude, ASU. the guy next to me did it too. And I was like, if you're screaming at the top of your lungs at the Arizona Coyotes at a game in November, I would never want to sit next to you for a playoff game. <laughs> like, yeah. I, and listen, I, I, I appreciate the fandom because like, you know, I love that. But 
like I, I want to ask the perspective of whether you're a guy or a girl or any, anyone on a date at a sporting event, if the person you're with is screaming nonstop the entire game, is that not just like a huge ick? Like I, if, if I went to a game with, you know, with a girl on a date and she was like screaming like, fuck you, Arizona, you suck. You're fucking bums. Like, and, and the guy behind me who wasn't really that annoying all game in the first period was saying Panarin is an overpaid bum and doesn't do shit. I was like, dude, you have not been watching hockey for the last 10 years. <laughs> like, so so many things. Oh I'm, I'm just God. like, yeah, no, like, yeah, he's an overpaid bum who's fucking eighth in the, eighth in the league right now. You dummy. Yeah, I'm like, I I just don't understand. I, listen, I get it. It's fun. Like you know that that is a huge part of what makes going to games fun. But I was just like secondhand embarrassed for. The well, people that can with. I add to that a little bit because yeah, yeah. also what is good with these older older folks? I'm talking about like this guy who was in front of me. Um, probably had 20 years on me, I would say huh. giving random players like random nicknames that I've never heard in my life. Okay. <laughs> like I heard one guy, let's go Artie. You could do it. I don't think anybody's no. ever called Panera and Artie. Okay. That's number one. <laughs> and then wait, it gets worse. And then the guy in front of me was like, was like, come on, Alfie, you can do it. Alfie. He was calling Lafreniere Alfie. Okay. Alfie. Uh-huh. Alfie. And I just, no I just can't deal. I, I, I just need to know if someone knows, like DM me where these nicknames are coming from, because it's, it's something, it's something. And don't get us wrong. We love that the fans have passion. Like I, I, I want, totally. I want a lot of that. I just don't want to sit right next to it. <laughs> I just don't want you to spill your beer on my head. Would that happen to you? Yeah, dude, this guy's like jumping up and down and his ears <laughs> splish splashing on, on me and my dad. We're like, dude, what are you doing? Like, dude, when there was a goal, I, I I mean like, dude, and the best part about the whole night was this guy for 55 minutes, you did not like not hear his voice mm-hmm. with five minutes left, just got Sorry. up and dipped out, just yeah. got up and dipped out with his with his girl. It was the funniest thing. Um, but also, all right, anyway. Wait, if you're if you're listening to this and this is you, we don't mean to offend you, but change, <laughs> <laughs> change. Um, yeah. All right, but anyways, I I do want to transition to some like actual Rangers and and you know some players and like what's going on. Uh, first things first is, dude, Truba just looks absolutely lost. I mean, I I hate to be the one to say it, and I know I said it last week, something like that, but I, I don't know what is going on with him. Um, he looks like a, a totally different player last year. I don't know if it's like a, a hangover still from from playoffs or, or what it was. I know he had some inconsistency in playoffs. He had some really good games, some really bad games. But, I mean, he, a, a, every single game this year, he, j- he just looks completely lost. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to agree with you on the offensive side of the game. I think his defensive game has still been fine, but every time he does have the puck, he looks like he's he, has the, he loses nervous. the he loses the puck. Yeah. He's whiffing on it. He's like not paying attention. Well, last night I noticed that it happened a couple times where he received a pass in the blue line and it just like went through his blade. And I don't know, yeah. you know, if he's like thinking. Sometimes that's like an over an overthinking thing, though, right? Like you're you're thinking about what you're going to do with the puck before you get it, and you kind of like like similar to who, who was it Galladay on the Giants. Like you're kind of thinking about what you're going to do before you catch the ball. And it makes you all nervous and you kind of fuck up. It's the same mm-hmm. thing in hockey. Whereas mm-hmm. Truba is like thinking about what he's going to do in the next play. And then he fucks the puck. He fucks it up when he gets the puck. Cause he's just like overthinking. So I think yeah, his defensive game has been fine. And and last night, the penalty he took, I think was a horrible call. Like that's just like a net front battle and the guy's helmet comes off and he gets called yeah. for a rough, but that's, that's Truba being Truba. I, I think he has been fine defensively. He hasn't been the best. Like he's made mistakes and mistakes are common. He's not, mm-hmm. you know, an NHL all-star by any means. But definitely when it comes to the offensive side of the game, he does not look like what he was three or four years ago. And and maybe that's, you know, confidence because he's not really put in those situations as much anymore. Like, mm-hmm. I know he is running the second power play unit, but I think at this point, try Keandre or try Zach Jones. Like, the second unit isn't really out there a lot anyway. You may as well just, like, give a younger guy with some more offensive upside some ice time because – Listen, I'm I'm not one to, I, I'm not one to bash players, and and I would never like really bash Truba because he he is like one of my favorite players in the Rangers, and I think he's such a positive such a positive point of the team. Like, uh-huh. did any, like did anyone not like Truba in the playoffs last year? Like he was huge. Like other players other, are intimidated other than by the him. game against Tampa where he he single handedly yeah, lost us the game, game three. And, and but and, other players and, are intimidated by him. They know when he's out there. Like he's sure. he's been a good sure. leader. I mean, he's always the first to ring the bell. No, listen, I appreciate yeah. what he does. From a physical standpoint, um, you know, from a leadership standpoint, 
but I think we certainly can all agree we need to see more from him from an offensive and defensive standpoint. Uh, even if he's not giving us the offense, I don't care. We don't need it. I, I want yeah. him to tighten up on defense and, and be a good defenseman, be a physical defenseman. Like, pay attention when you're getting the puck. Use your vision. Uh, things that we've seen from him in the past, like, I hope he figures it out because we have this guy for a long time. He's our yeah. captain now. Um, and, you know, he just needs to figure it out. But uh, aside from him, I, I made the executive decision that I am going to ship out a medical kit and some Tums to Kravtsov. <laughs> because that boy can't catch a break. He's just not helping himself right now. And, and listen, I, I you know, I, I went on uh I went on a different podcast today actually and talked about this a little bit. I, I think with Kravsov different podcast? Yeah, I was invited as a guest and you weren't loser. Um, what was it called? It was the Broadway Block guys. They post a lot of the videos on Twitter and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, they nice, actually nice DM me one saying you're a dork, but um, <laughs> yeah. all right, anyway. they're, they're, they're nice dudes. But yeah, so I, I talked about Kravsov on there and Listen, the narrative in hockey culture has also changed, right? Like, you know, it comes out that Kravtsov has, has a stomach bug and isn't going to play. Ten years ago, you know, this is a guy who's trying to make this team, trying to find a role in the team. No matter what he's going through, he's going he's, he's gonna to play. No matter what he's going through. But now, and, yeah, but, but now, and I think it's a positive, like, you know, if players aren't really feeling 100% and you're playing against the Arizona Coyotes in November, you shouldn't really yeah. feel the need to, to force it, right? Like, so I, I do respect that, and I think it's important for the players to feel fully healthy, especially this time of year, mm-hmm. because the rest of the season is a huge grind. But at the same time, it's kind of a lose-lose for Krausov because he is trying to earn a spot in this team. And, you know, all these reports that are coming out, like Vince tweeted he was at the dentist yesterday morning or something, and, yeah, you know, yeah. it, it's just not helping his case. And, and obviously, yeah. you know, when you play in New York, fans are going to get on you for anything that you do if you're not producing. So he's not really helping himself, and... Listen, I, I want him to be successful, and I think he will at some point in this league, but uh, things just have not gone his way, and and I feel horrible for the kid because there really is so much upside. Yeah, totally. No, you're you're not wrong with any of that, and before we get into fan questions, the only, the only other two things I quickly wanted to touch on is, one, I'm super bummed that the World Cup of Hockey got pushed to yeah. 2025. I completely understand the decision because there's some real shit going on in Russia right now, and you know, they is want that to even locked that. at 2025? Is that locked yeah. in? Yeah, okay. 2025. Um, February, I, I believe they said. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's obviously unfortunate, but, um, you know, they they do need to figure this stuff out um, from a real-world standpoint. So I, I get the decision. It's just unfortunate because I am so excited for that tournament. And then uh, the only other thing is Brendan Othman got traded. And yeah. – There was a lot of stuff going around because he was suspended for like shooting the puck at, at the opposing bench or something like that. And there was a lot of like speculation going around like, Oh, maybe he wanted to get out of there. You know, had a, had a rough front rough go with the team or something like that. Yeah. Nice hair. Um, But (laughs) it did come out that Othman actually decided to move to be closer to his grandparents who were older. I don't know if they're sick, but, um, yeah, so, so nothing like crazy like that, but, uh, I, I, I did get a, uh, a message asking if that would affect his eligibility status to get called up to the Rangers. And unfortunately the Pete's are within the OHL, so nothing changes there. Um, I believe the Rangers can still call him up if they want right when the, uh, OHL playoffs and season are done. And, uh, we, we might see this guy if, if some of our, uh, you know, if Kravtsov doesn't figure it out or, or someone like that, we could definitely see this guy at some point. So, um, I still, I'm still confused on what that rule is. It's just like an eligibility rule. Like it, it's similar to the Kravtsov situation where like he couldn't come over until Russia and until tractor finished his, uh, you know, their season, like they had mm-hmm. to play playoffs and go do do all that jazz and then and then he was eligible to come over even though he didn't but i think it's the same but all right let's go into questions okay so our first one is from sammy hockey 36 why are the rangers reverting back to pass more and shoot later they get Mm. chances but don't shoot i mean i I think this is a this is a story or as cody likes to make fun of me a tale as old as time as old as time Uh what what rangers team have we watched that didn't play too cute that you know was always the extra team. pass. It's, it's Honestly, always this is, thing. this is also like the best shooting Rangers team. I well, not like percentage wise, but the Rangers right now have the fifth most shots on goal per game, thirty four point four yeah. a game. Like they're they're shooting the puck, and and you know to have that be noticed that they're still passing up 
good mm-hmm. opportunities is definitely a little alarming. But you know, like like we've said a lot, this is a super talented and and you know skill first kind of team. So they're going to play a little too cute every now and then. But I think you know when the playoffs come, they'll they'll kind of transition and, and switch gears a little bit. But you know, I, it, it's just gonna this is going to be the case forever. I think when it comes to the Rangers, just you know, the extra pass, the pretty play, just a part of yeah. playing in New York. It's it's a show. It's entertainment. You know. Couldn't have said it better myself. Next one. Okay. Sharon A904. What do you think is the reason the team is playing poorly aside from tonight, assuming this is the Coyotes game when she wrote in? Yeah. I, I mean, I think it comes down to just finding consistency and playing better defense. I think that's, that's really it. Um, you know, like I said, generating more quality shots uh, as opposed to more shots. I think last year we saw the Rangers getting outshot most nights, but the shots they did take were effective. Um, They were mid and high danger shots, good shots. And I think this year they're just like Johnny said, they're getting too cute. They're doing too many extra passes. They're taking like weird angled, low danger shots. And I think they just need to really like find their groove and play more consistent all around. And obviously the defense needs to get a little better. Uh, I will say I did think, Braden Schneider has had a, a, a couple really good games that he built off of uh, recently and, and Hayek's actually not looked bad either. So it's funny you say that because I was thinking about the Braden Schneider Well, not, it wasn't his goal. It was Carpenter who had the, the deflection, yeah. but yeah. How many of those goals have you seen the Rangers score this year? Not many, not many shots from the Three, point that get deflected two. in. Yeah. It's like, yeah. And, and that's like the highest percentage of goals that are scored in the NHL. So I think yeah. that's like, you know, the reason they're playing poorly is because they're not getting those garbage goals. Like we talked about yeah. this last week. They, they don't play that ugly, gritty style. And it's just, mm-hmm. it's not instilled in this team right now. But at some point, that's going to have to click when they're forced to score those ugly goals because teams are going to be more physical on them and they're going to have no other choice. And I think, you know, this is something I also talked about on, on the other show. And I hate to like just steal things that I said earlier today, but yeah, um, what? yeah I don't know. Sorry. But I think this is important because. And I think Joe Micheletti kind of touched on this also. Teams are getting up to play the Rangers. Like mm-hmm. everyone wants to beat the Rangers because they have the Vezina goalie, Igor Shesterkin. They have a Norris defenseman, Adam Fox, an MVP t- candidate, Artemi Panarin. Like people are afraid of playing the Rangers, where last year that wasn't really the case. And the Rangers aren't necessarily, you know, getting up for every game. It's, it's very, right. and listen, as a player, like there were so many games, you know, in the season. Like I played. I think it was a total of like 68 games when I played in the NHL and there's games. It's a, it's a Friday night. You're playing in Odessa, Texas, and you're just not excited to play. Like how many you know, points I did you really have in those 68 games? I probably played uh, in the six. I had, I think 46 Three? and 60, oh. 46 and 60. Um, Proud of you. Thank you. I played D one. Uh, <laughs> but you know, back to that point though, I can't really compare, you know, a Friday night in Odessa to playing at Madison square garden against the Arizona coyotes. But mm-hmm. To that point, like sometimes you're just not excited to play against a team that doesn't really have much hype. And that's no disrespect to the Coyotes, but it's just the, it's just the case when you're playing 82 games a year. So, like, you know, there are a lot of times where you get up and you're excited for a game. Like, you know, think about the effort that the Rangers had against the Avalanche as opposed to their effort last night against the Coyotes. Like, it's just night and day, you know. So yeah. I think that's the reason why they're playing poorly is maybe just like they're respecting their opponent factor. Um, you know, they could do a better job at that. But, you know, I think that's just going to happen the, the more the season goes on. Yep. Uh, this is a new person, I think. Ben Star, thirty-three. I don't know if we've gotten a question from Ben before. What's up, Ben? Will the Rangers? This is a Cody question for sure. Will the mm. Rangers pursue in getting Kane, and if so, will it be soon? Yeah, that's a really good question, and I actually just uh, was texting with Johnny and a couple of guys in our group chat about it. Um, I'm not so sure they're going to pursue Kane. I think his his price is going to be very hefty. Uh, obviously there's the salary factor where Chicago is going to have to eat half. If they are eating half, it's going to cost any team a pretty penny in draft capital. As we all know, Drury keeps his cards really close to his chest. Um, but it, it is possible. And then another guy who, who I was mentioning to Johnny, who I think would, would be a really nice fit for this team is uh, Vlad Tarasenko. Um, <laughs> there's a Connor Garland. No, not Connor. No, not Connor Garland. Um, uh-huh. Vlad Tarasenko, I think he would be, uh, you know, another elite forward that could really help supplement that top six. 
and ultimately push the team over the edge. Not to say Patrick Kane won't, because he absolutely will as well. I just think mm. he might cost more um, due to his salary being almost double. Um, he's probably, not probably, he is better than Tarasenko, and he is going to have an insane abundance of suitors. So we're going to have to outbid people and and you know give the best package. And I don't know if Drury is honestly going to want to get into a bidding war. So Tarasenko and Panarin would be sick sick together. dude sick yeah. and dude and uh throw crabs off on on the right let him get some, let him get his point percentage up what's up well, no tara Sanko's, he's a winger he's not a center yeah yeah no he's a winger i know <laughs> um, but no did, did he ever play i feel like he've he's played a little center no i don't think so no i Maybe mean not. you no. you definitely could be right but like i no. i just i don't i don't have any memory of that all right um all right james steven 37 i think he's new also what's wrong with our power play so much, man. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, they're just, we, we just went over it. Uh, I think they're, they're five on five problems also apply to their power play where they're just getting too cute and they're going for the extra pass. And, you know, at some point you got to just set it like they always want to set Mika up on that one timer, right? Every single time. And everybody knows it's coming. Their opponents know it's coming. Um, and then Crider's in front hoping to get the, uh, deflect right it's the same thing every single time uh the they need to what <laughs> the deflect yeah exactly um oh, they just need to shoot more they need to shoot more on the power play uh you know Crider's in front panarin does his thing foxy's out there i think they just need to shoot more they're they're definitely controlling the puck on the power play they're just not generating enough shots is what i think it is I'll tell you what needs to happen, and, and this is piggybacking off of what you said. When they when the opponent takes away Mika, everyone's a little more hesitant to shoot. Mm-hmm. And I think if Foxy, which you know, he's only 24, turning 25. I think when Foxy develops a harder slap shot and actually becomes like a threat to shoot, the range of power play will only be so much better. Yeah, but like I think everyone to this point understands that Fox is pass first. Like he's not necessarily yeah. Ripping a yeah. one timer, you know, we did see him score a slap shot goal against Detroit, which was nice. But yeah, you know, I think once Fox gets that in his repertoire, like that that one timer threat, this power play is going to be even so much more dangerous. Because right now, like, when do you really see a defenseman or a penalty killer bite when Fox goes to shoot? Like, it doesn't really happen because he's not. Yeah, you know, if anything, he's he's just getting it on net. He's not necessarily throwing a hard shot at the net, but he's getting the puck on there to to get deflected by Trocheck or Kreider. So, mm-hmm. you know, I think if he's more of a shooting threat. Because Panarin is somewhat of a three a shooting threat, I think the opponents kind of respect him a little bit. But if Foxy becomes a shooting threat, then this power play is by no means the best power play in the league, in my mind. Okay, okay, all right. Next, um, we got two more. Next, right. NY Rocky ninety three is Hayek <laughs> good? <laughs> uh, he, he could be. Um, you know the the Hayek and and Gautier resurgence tour is fully in effect right now. Both guys had a couple, uh, a string of good games in a row, and let's just let's just ride this wave, baby. I think I think we don't need to say anything else. Let's just ride the wave and see where it takes us. I personally would much rather see Zach Jones in the lineup than Hayek. We know, I, I we know, think, you got the humans loyalty. We know. No, but I also think I think Jones is just a better skater. I, I Obviously, he's a better player, yeah. sure. But yeah. Hayek's been on this team for like eleven years, and he's only like twenty three. So who knows? He actually um, Molly, Molly tweeted it last night. Hayek don't take no shit. He was getting he was getting physical last night. I like that actually out of him. That was nice to see. He definitely is more physical than Jones. So they are like two different players. But um, yeah. you know, I think he's he's done what you can ask for. I guess right now, right? Like yeah. he's not standing out. He's not not standing yeah. out. So all right, send us to the last question. Let's do Here's it. The last one, and this is actually just a, a long message. So I'm just gonna read the whole message. All right, boys, got a question for you to discuss. But what do you think the value of Sammy Blay is? He's had very, very few bright spots where, where noticeable. He seems slow and brings Reeves out of the lineup. Lord knows Reeves isn't offensive, but I feel like he brings a lot more to the room, off ice, and muscle that is lacking. And this is yeah. Matty James, who's a good friend of mine. I think Sammy Blay doesn't give much value at all to the Rangers. Um, you know, we saw last year in the 10, 15 games he played, he was a big hitter and obviously set the tone a lot with his hits. He hasn't done that this year. Um, and he doesn't have a Rangers goal yet in, in 30 games or, or whatever it is. Uh, I, I just don't think he's that effective and I, this might be a hot take, but I think Dryden hunt was better. 
So that is kind of a hot take. I, I, I honestly, that'd be a good poll to ask. Who'd you rather than line up Dryden Hunter or Sammy Blay? Um, the Blay thing to me, I just, I think he played a much bigger role when he was in St. Louis and he just hasn't been able to find his like comfort he had, level he here. Didn't, though. He didn't, but he, he scored like goals. Third... He played, he played third line. He scored goals. Sure. Like, All right, fine. But St. Louis top to bottom. I mean, they were good, but they weren't as necessarily talented as the Rangers are right now. Like yeah. the Rangers play a skill game where St. Louis played more of like an in your face kind of style. Mm. And that just suited his, his style of play more. I think like, yeah, the Rangers don't necessarily play, you know, a, a grinded out in your face kind of game where Sammy Blay right. is used to doing that. Um, and, and, you know, he has talent. I think the confidence just might Does not he be though? There. Yeah. He, he's made some good plays. Could we do that. T- uh, do you remember that toe drag assist he had last year? I think against uh, Nashville. No, no, I think it was Lafreniere. He played like nine school. games. I don't remember any of his games other than some of his big hits, but, yeah. um, that being said, yeah, man, I, I just think uh, I don't think you're going to see much from him if he if he continues to get stuck on the third and fourth line. Uh, I think he's a guy who probably needs to play in a top six role to be very effective, and I, I just don't think there's a spot for him right now there. Um, that being said, like, you know, like I say with every guy on our squad right now, I, I hope he figures it out. Uh, I hope he starts scoring some goals because we could mm-hmm. definitely use the offense on the fourth line. Like it was really nice to see Gaudreau and Carpenter have goals against yeah. the Coyotes. So we will see. Um, but that being said, Johnny, I, I think it's time we can. Uh, we have a wonderful interview today with uh, Anna Dua. Should have mentioned earlier that she was coming on. We're so bad at mentioning who our guest is. I feel so like so bad. But yes, Anna Dua, great friend of mine. We did the third period live show together, so we're gonna kick it over to her right now. Bye bye. This week on the Blue Crew, we're very happy and scared to welcome on a good friend of the show, a good friend of mine, Anna Dua from NHL Fantasy on Ice and the host of Three to Watch, which you can check out weekly. I've been terrified to have her on here for, what, like four months now? We've been trying to get this done? I've been trying to get on this podcast for (laughs) so long. So long, Johnny hasn't let me, but the time has finally come. Nobody chirps me more in the hockey world than Anna Dua, so... Welcome this to the show, great. Anna. Our listeners are going to love you. You're the best, and I'm happy you're here. That was so sweet. This is such a you know sweet I mean it. So yeah. I want to introduce Anna also a little bit further as one of the most hardest working people in hockey. I'm going to tell a quick story. I invited her to make believe a bar in New York City for like a happy hour birthday party for one of my friends. And 10 minutes after she gets there, or maybe like right before she got there, Johnny Gaudreau signs with the Columbus Blue Jackets, and this girl whips out her computer and starts writing in the middle of a New York City bar. So... Literally anyone who reads her work, she's nonstop. She works her ass off. But I'm going to stop pumping your tires, and I'm going to ask you a hard-hitting question. This season has been an ass-backward start so far. The bad teams are doing well. The good teams are a little slow trying to figure it out. What to you has been the biggest surprise so far in the early NHL season? I'll give you a team. Shout out Brat Pack. I know people <laughs> are listening. The New Jersey Devils, that nine-game win streak. They've mm-hmm. really found something that works for them because I think their biggest issue heading into this year was their goaltending. But they're allowing the fewest shots on goal among all NHL teams right now. So they kind of alleviated the need for a solid goaltender. They're putting up show- so many shots every single night. And you're seeing these players that you expected to take another level Nico Heischer, especially. Jesper Bratt had a great year last year. We didn't know if he was going to continue it into this year. They're all playing so, so well right now. So the New Jersey Devils, as a team, the most surprising. As a player, Eric Carlson of the San Jose Sharks. I'm getting like deja vu from when I was a kid, seeing Eric Carlson playing the way he's playing right now. Literally, I mean, he's tied for top five in the NHL in goals among all skaters and has the second most even strength points among all skaters. He's tied with Nathan McKinnon right now, and he's playing on the San Jose Sharks. Like, Mm -hmm. insane. Adam Fox is right behind him now. He's creeping up, not in goals, but in points. But to to that same tune, do you think Carlson can sustain it on a team like the Sharks? It's tough, but we've seen players in the past, not this season so far, although he's kind of turning around. Timo Meyer has always had decent years despite playing on the San Jose Sharks. Carlson, I actually thought would take another step up this season just because Brent Burns went to Carolina. So now it's his team. It's his blue line. So I think he does sustain it. He's going to regress a bit. I mean, there's no way he's sustaining this pace for the whole season, but I think he's going to be in the Norris conversation by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't dabble too much in fantasy (laughs) hockey, and I know you are a fantasy experts so who are a few guys that you predict will be league winners this year and are there any rangers players that might make or break some teams 
Uh, I mean, I think right now there's a lot of concern in the fantasy world because players we expected to be league winners, maybe mm-hmm. someone like Jonathan Huberto, he's coming back from injury, but even before, I mean, he's just been a little bit of a disappointment fantasy wise. Yeah. There are players who are consistently good. I mean, you have the Colorado avalanche. I know Johnny loves kill McCarr. He mm-hmm. actually had kind of a slow scoring start, but I'm sure he's going to turn around. He's going to be a league winner. Nathan McKinnon's going to be a league ruiner. Mika Rantanen sticking out to me the most from the Colorado avalanche right now. I think anyone who grabbed Rantanen is going to be doing phenomenal this year. Jesper Bratt, if he maintains his level, I think that's going to be a steal because I don't see him going too high in a lot of drafts so far. Yeah. Um, Mikhail Sergachev, if we're going a little bit deeper in terms of defensemen, he actually took yeah. over the first power play quarterback from Victor Hedman. And I know Victor Hedman's usually one of the first defensemen off the board, but I mean, how happy are you right now if you have Sergachev on your team? So these are some of my, I guess, fantasy winners for this season. But I think right now, just to give the Rangers a little bit of love, one of the best pickups at this moment is Philip Hedl. He's just mm-hmm. been doing so great right now. He actually leads the Rangers in five on five points for 60 minutes as of now with 3.68, which is a phenomenal stat given the team he's on with such talented players like Zibanejad and Chris Kreider and Adam Fox and all of those. So Hedl's really making a case for himself. I don't know if he has the staying power right now, but he's only 13% rostered in fantasy. So if you can pick him up, pick him up this week, I would recommend it. It's yeah. the tint advisor. It's, it is tint advisor, wow. Hedl. Yeah, but transitioning from fantasy land to – another fantasy land um, <laughs> where, where, where you're a fantasy GM. If you can pick three players each at a different position. So one forward, one D man and one goalie to build your future cup team around right now in today's NHL, who are you going with? Hmm. Like anyone ever, like I can give you like the most basic answer right now and say, like, yeah, oh, yeah. obviously don't be basic. <laughs> I mean, if you say McDavid, we might judge you a little bit, but it's fair. I asked it. So we'll, we'll let you, uh, you want me to go a little bit deeper cut. So you want a defenseman, a forward and a goalie. What grit What does grit okay. mean to you? No. Um, how about, you know what? I'm going to start with the goalie. Cause I'm going to give Johnny some love here. I haven't even chirped him yet. I'm just being so nice. <laughs> yeah, you are being, well, I kind of gave you a nice intro. So like you did, you did. Yeah, now the tone yeah. is like offset for this. Everyone's yeah. going to be so disappointed, but Johnny said that Jake Ottinger would be a Vesna, I guess, like in the conversation as early as this season in a show we did together in the uh, preseason. And that's going to be my goalie. I think Jake Ottinger is going to be one of the best goalies, if not the best goalie in the NHL in the next two to three seasons. I think this year, so sorry for anyone listening, Igor Shostorkin and Andre Vasilevsky have showcased that they're not the robots everyone thought they were. They've had some games where they've fallen below 900. Vasilevsky especially is kind of concerning to me at this point. And I think Jake Ottinger has like one faulty game. He completely bounces back. The next game is ready to go. He's just so talented. So he's going to be the goalie that I'm taking on this team. I think the forward I'm taking on this team, hmm, deep cut, deep cut. You could say Panarin. Brady Kachuk. Brady Kachuk. Brady Kachuk. Brady that- Kachuk, really? Brady Kachuk. Like long term, long, long term. Just because over he- Matthew. Uh, yeah, over Matthew. Have you been wow. seeing the Florida Panthers this season? Um, just Brady Kachuk is actually doing quite well. He's like top ten in the NHL right now and points quietly. The Ottawa Senators also. Yeah. So low in the standings, but are like mm-hmm. dominating every single metric. They have a top 10 power play. They're doing so well. They're just not winning games. I think they're playing much better they are this season than they did last season. They're just not winning yeah. those games. But we're going to see this turnaround really quickly. So I'm going deep, deep cut right now for a No, point. no, that's good. Basic answer. I'm giving you Brady Kachuk. He's a, he covers so many metrics, right? So he's, I don't even he's, think yeah. anyone took him in our draft show. They didn't. He's getting those hits. I'm taking Brady Kachuk as my forward right now. And then okay. for defensemen, hmm, this is tough. Should I say Adam Fox? I can. You say should. That. You should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adam Fox we, we appreciate. Know your, your audience. After that, game, after that game against the Detroit Red Wings, where the Rangers absolutely absolutely demolished the Red Wings, I'll say Adam Fox. I kind of have a, a follow up, uh, like somewhat similar, and, and obviously I think the top three are like non debatable. But right now, like I think there's more guys that are kind of in the mix now than ever. Top five players in the NHL right now. Like, obviously, I think it's McDavid, McCarr, McKinnon. Those are the top three. Like, I don't think that's debatable at all. Do you think it's Disagree. Debatable? You do? Disagree. Who? Disagree. What fucking stupid Disagree. thing are you going to say right now? Who? It's not stupid whatsoever. I would say McDavid's one. I would say Austin Matthews is two. How can you discount All around him? player? How, he won the heart last year. How can, you, how can you discount that? And number three, sure, if you want to say McCarr, but I think... McKinnon's in the in the running there. I think Kucherov's in the running there. I think there's plenty of guys in the running there. Kucherov would have 
Kucherov would have had 120 points last year if he was healthy. So give us your top five then. Let's start with you. Okay. Is that David's a frozen or is that a, are you just like, well, that's my face. I was a very flabbergasted uh, to hear all, all She's like, that. what is he too. saying? I'm blown away. Yeah. Cody, uh, I had high hopes for you, but please. I don't uh, even have Matthews uh, in my top five. Continue. That's fine. Uh, McDavid, Matthews. Listen, I'm going, <laughs> You're regretting it now. I'm going deep cut just like you. You yeah. can't, you can't hate on it. Um, uh-huh. No, I'm going McDavid one, Matthews two. I would say Kucherov three, mm-hmm. Makar four, and I know who I want to say five, but like you're leaving McKinnon out of your top five. No, relax. I'm saying <laughs> McKinnon, but I will say, in terms of you know, if I want to be a little bit different, you could make an argument for a goalie in you know who who did win the Vesna. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah. um, but yeah, no, I would say I would say McKinnon fifth, but. I don't know. I I had I had tr- there's a lot of guys like Drysidel. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's like punching the air right now. Who? Like yeah, he's just yeah. like flying in the corner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, listen, there's a lot of guys. Top five's tough, but um, I don't think the top three is so so set in stone. I don't know. All right, Ad, let's hear your rebuttal. My top five right now. Are we talking right now, or are we talking just like- just literally like if you were Last sitting five down? Years. You were no right now. If you were sitting down and someone said who are the five best players in the league, or like all all around five best players in the league, don't mm-hmm. even think stats. Like just go eye test. Like who would you say are the top five? I think McDavid's number one. For that sure. is a no brainer. I think McKinnon, Drysidle are my number two and three, roughly in that area. Once above the other, sometimes they flip flop back and forth. I think you have a case for Kale McCarr being number four. I think you have a case for Kale McCarr eventually being number three. To be honest, he's just. Mm-hmm a defenseman that you rarely see in this league. Um, now I'm at number – those are four, right? So I have one more. Ooh, this mm-hmm. is tough. Like, disrespect to Austin Matthews. Uh, listen, I'm from Toronto. Yeah. Like, I have to preface this on everything I go on to because I seem like such a Toronto hater, but I swear on my life I am from Toronto. But I got to go to, like, Kucherov, maybe – maybe Pasternak, to be honest. Right no, that's now. A good one. Oh, yeah. Right now, David Pasternak, the Boston Bruins are something else. He's had a great, great start this year. In terms of the player that I'm very, very high on that I think is going to be a top five player in the NHL, maybe within the – like, it's kind of sad because this year has been a little bit of a disservice to him because his team environment isn't the greatest. But if he was on a contending team, Kirill Kaprizov would That's be a right. Okay. All right. He would be <laughs> yeah. a top five player in the NHL. Yeah. So, <laughs> totally. I'm going to piggyback off that. My top three are – McDavid, McKinnon, McCarr in that order. And then four, I had Kaprizov. Like, all-around player, man. Like, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know the fancy stats behind Kaprizov right now, but when I watch him play, he is noticeable every single shift, and he dominates possession and creates every single offensive play that Minnesota generates. Like, he is so much fun to watch, and it's a shame that people in New York probably don't watch him much because, you know, he's playing on the Minnesota Wild. But if anyone is listening and has a chance to watch Kaprizov play, like, it is so much fun to watch him play. It is. And it was then, my first round draft pick. You know? I know. You stole it from me. Ruin Johnny's team <laughs> game, just for the record. Yeah. Well, um, can I just say the Rangers would have had 60 points if it wasn't for Igor Shesterkin last year. So if true. you want to if you want to throw that in the ring, then I'm going to throw a little a little but soft. I, I still got to get my fifth. And I think okay. this player, it's crazy that he's still like – I don't want to say he's like disrespected now, but like Sidney Crosby is still, in my mind, like – you know, McDavid's obviously the best of the game right now, but everything else, Crosby is still so much fun to watch and like so creative. And I and I don't love Crosby. I was never a Crosby lover as a kid because he was like honestly the Rangers' like biggest enemy, I think, growing up for me when the Rangers played the Penguins almost every yeah. year in the playoffs. But I'm still amazed at everything this guy can do at, at his age. He's like what, 35 now? 34? Something like that. I know he's mid 30s. 37? No, no, he was born in 87. So yeah. he's so he's 34, 34 turning 35. 35 or third. Yeah. No, he's 35. He's 35. Yeah, August, <laughs> August math, math guys. We're not, a, we're not, yeah, we're not a math podcast, but um, I think like Crosby's not really talked about as much anymore. I don't know. So, okay. So you just said all those players, but left out Matthews and left out Dracidal. So <laughs> I thought I was going to beef with Johnny on this podcast, but it's like Cody beefing with Johnny on this whole podcast. <laughs> what is what we, we do? This is what we do every week. We but, okay, so let me let me transition away from this though a little bit. Um, AD, you are you know a Toronto native, like you said, you've been around you know the craziness that is Toronto playoffs, but you're also you know you experienced 
Rangers playoffs in New York City last year. How do you compare like the Rangers fandom to the Toronto fandom? Like, because now you know, last week we we've seen people burning Marner jerseys and all that nonsense just because Toronto mm-hmm. people are nuts. But to that same breath, like two weeks ago, I saw a guy selling all of his Rangers shit, like just ready to give up on this team. So I don't think we're as negative, but. Can you compare the two cities like during a playoff run, even though Toronto runs are a week? <laughs> uh, whoa. Okay. <laughs> Coming out fighting. Uh, they're similar in some ways. They're very different in other ways. Obviously, original six teams. So you have mm-hmm. like the love there. But Canada's something else, guys. I think the passion in Toronto is just something else. I think the passion in Vancouver also something else, to be honest, if we're talking fan bases. But Toronto takes their hockey very, very seriously. And it's a tough city to play in. I always say if I was a player, I don't know if I would love playing in Toronto, even though mm-hmm. that's my hometown. Love the city. I think I want to see I, You wouldn't last a minute there. What? <laughs> you wouldn't last a minute. In Toronto? Oh, my God. Yeah. I would cry like every single day. But um, it's, <laughs> it's because they love the team. It's because they love the team. So you got to respect it. But New York was amazing. I mean, I went to the uh, beginning of the playoffs last year. I went to their series against the Hurricanes at MSG, and the atmosphere was unreal. New York is just such a good sports city. But seeing, like, the Rangers game at MSG, I mean, it's the world's most famous arena. So you get, mm-hmm. like, you get the chills when you're there that maybe you don't get at Scotiabank. No offense <laughs> Yeah. But, uh, Rangers fans love their hockey. I don't think they're as negative as Leafs fans. I think they are almost as passionate. Okay, that's yeah. That's they're hard. they're definitely negative for sure. Um, you you know. gotta visit Toronto, bud. You gotta visit Toronto. Yeah. Bud. No, I mean, listen. When you when you haven't won a playoff series in like 15 years, it's tough. Um, but all right, I want to transition a little bit, bec- and I want to go back to. We're, we're doing a lot of transitioning. Well, because I wa- <laughs> because I want to go back to McDavid because we all agree <laughs> he is the best player in the NHL. Um, you know, at what point in McDavid's career do you think he could enter the greatest of all time talks, or how many cups would it take for him to be in this discussion? Or basically, like, what does he need to do to be in this discussion? Because, I mean, the points he's putting up is obviously not Gretzky level. Um, you know, I don't think any we're ever going to see anybody put up 200 points in a season again. Um, but that being said, he is producing points at, at his age at, like, such an incredible rate. And, and what he does with the puck is just magic. So I'm just curious on, on your guys' thoughts. Um, For me, I think he's already in that conversation. I think the cups are a secondary thing. It's very obvious that he is going to fulfill that title one day, or at least be one of two or three players who have that title, depending on your preference. But McDavid is just like something else. He's like averaging nearly like a goal per game to start. Does he do it on Edmonton though? Uh, Like win a Stanley Cup on Edmonton? Yeah. Um, Yeah, I can see it happening. I actually have Edmonton in my finals this year. Um, I know it doesn't seem like the best look right now, but they have a lot of pieces that they could turn it around. I know their goaltending's kind of fallen flat to start this season off, but I still stand by it. I still stand by it. I have Edmonton as my Western Conference team in the Stanley Cup Finals this year against the Carolina Hurricanes. I don't have the money, but I have I guess the New York Rangers, you said? Uh, (laughs) Yeah, Carolina Hurricanes. (laughs) Close enough, close enough. I mean, I had the Blues versus the Penguins in my preseason prediction. <laughs> <Actually? laughs> yeah, was was shit Johnny, right yeah. Johnny would not stop talking about how good the Penguins were going to be, and then they, they had a hot start. Straight, it was great. Yeah. We can't um, focus on the Penguins here. I think we got to mention that he said the Blues were going to be. Um, well, the Blues also started out. Both teams started out like three and zero, looking great. I looked like a genius. I can't talk. Um, I said the Ducks were going to be great. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, back to the McDavid thing. I think. I think we're like two years away from it, like starting to be like LeBron MJ. I, mm-hmm. I think the only thing that's not, you know, the reason not for that conversation to Cody's point is because McDavid hasn't won a cup yet. But I think once he gets that, that's when that conversation starts. Like, is McDavid the all time goat? Because yeah. everyone does factor championships in. Like, it's just, you know, p- people debate if Corey Crawford and Henrik Lundqvist are in the same category, which is ridiculous because Henrik was incredible. And granted, Crawford has two cups, but. I think everything backs up that Lundqvist was a much better goalie, but people say like he couldn't win. And then there's, you know, my roommate that was just in here is that is that guy who argues that always. That Henry okay. Lundqvist sucks because he never won. But um, yeah, the McDavid Gretzky debate. I think it's also really tough generationally because it's so much harder to play in the NHL now than it was back then. Like you know, I, I'm convinced that if you put me in the NHL in the 80s, and this is uh, this is gonna backfire here so much. Go. I I could have scored fucking 20 goals back then. 
Prettiest skater no? in the league, Johnny Lazarus. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I've actually only seen Johnny skate once, so I don't even know. You have? And that just, like video you post on Twitter. Just go to the Brooklyn uh, Bridge. You'll see him every Saturday. Ever seen Johnny. <laughs> just don't watch my highlights against Merrimack from 2017. That's what we're doing like, again next time I come on this pod. It's you're not even gonna be here. It's just me and Cody. We're gonna just watching film. I mean, just watching watch watching life. Johnny clips. Um, but Johnny, you did say something pretty interesting there in regards to Crawford and Lundquist. You're welcome. The rare compliment for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but no, I have a question for Anna. I mean, how much do you think elite goaltending truly matters when it comes to winning a Stanley Cup? Uh, we just saw Darcy Kemper do it, and I think we could all agree he's not an elite goaltender. Uh, but then you see someone like Vazzy do it multiple times and, you know, or, or get there at least. So I'm curious on your thoughts on that. I think good goalies build championship teams. I think you need a very, very good team to overlook the fact that you don't have a good goalie if you if that is the case. But I think good goalies build championship teams. And when I say this, I'm thinking of one person in particular, and that is Mark andre Fleury. Aww. I think he is a phenomenal goaltender. And the year Vegas came into the league, I said mm. that Vegas was going to make yeah. it. And I got roasted for saying this because everyone's like, there's no way this is going to happen. And I was like, listen, if there's one person I trust to carry Vegas to at least making the postseason, it's Mark andre Fleury. And he took them all the way to the Stanley Cup finals in their first year. So when you see like goalies like Fleury, I yeah. mean, they're taking any team as far as they can go. Obviously, when he was on Pittsburgh, phenomenal team all around. But you see that he can take an inaugural team all the way to the very, very end. Then they end up winning the cup year, but that year, but made it all the way there so good goaltending takes you very far we look at the dallas stars this season they were a team that i thought would be in the mix in the postseason i think they've had a much better start in a lot of metrics than i was expecting and a big reason behind that is jake ottinger he kept them in the playoffs last year i mean my god that game seven was an unreal performance by Jake Ottinger, one of the best. The whole series. Players. The whole series, but especially that last game was one of the best single game yeah. performances I've seen in so long. And if you have a guy like that on your team, if it went slightly the other way, I mean, how far could Dallas have gone just riding on how good his performances were? So I think good goalies can take you very, very far, and you need to have a very good team like Colorado did last season to get over not having an elite goaltender. I yeah, got a little, fun, I got a little fun one for you. Piggybacking off that, we'll do a little FKM for anyone who doesn't know what that stands for. Step brothers, fuck, kill, marry. You gotta, but not like you know. We're talking about hockey skill here. Okay. Uh, yeah. So let's say in hockey terms, like start one, bench one, trade one. That could be like a new thing that we do. I think I saw a Bar Down do something similar. Um, Copycat. Vasilevsky, Igor Shosturkin, Ilya Sorokin. Okay. I don't know if anyone listened to my podcast this morning, but I did. I did not listen yet. I meant to listen okay. to that before we started. I did not. I, I did felt- say <laughs> on the NHL Fantasy on Ice podcast that we are nearing the point where it is worth discussing with those other two, Shesterkin and Vasilevsky, whether Ilya Sorokin is the best goalie in the NHL. Just because he has a 9-3-2 save percentage so far this season. He does well when the Islanders are not doing well. He does well when the Islanders are doing well. He's just a phenomenal, phenomenal goalie. I think we're nearing the point where he's going to be with Shesterkin and Vasilevsky in that conversation about who's the best goalie in the NHL right now. Mm -hmm. So this is tough. Right now, right now, I think... I know you're. I know you're killing Igor in your mind, but you're afraid to say it on the show. No, no. I think right now, based on performance, right now I'm letting go of Vassy. I think really. Vassie, I think wow. To go, he's just he's been like tough for a lot of lot of mm-hmm. fans so far to start the season and we're almost at American Thanksgiving and there's no sign of any consistency coming back and so it's it's been tough I think Shesterkin had a couple good games recently that have helped me change my opinion on him so far but I'm starting Sorokin wow that's uh okay I I didn't see it going that way but um no I think that's the right answer and and the, the weird thing to me about Sorokin is like as a player and I don't know if you can like both you can attest to this there are some goalies that just like don't look intimidating in the net like they can be good but they just like like i wouldn't be afraid to shoot on them and sorokin's just like one of those guys where i feel like you know i've never been on the ice with him obviously but when i see replays i feel like there's a lot of room to shoot you know like there's other yeah. goalies like that where you know a vasilevsky or a sorokin where i'm like wow where would i even put this puck but like when i see sorokin in net you know as a, as a forward i'm not like this is also this could like I could get so many tweets like, dude, you never fucking played in the NHL. Like, what do you know about shooting on Sorokin? Mm-hmm. But, you know, just like from the eye test, I feel like there's just, you know, no intimidation factor. But he's still so mobile and so good. I don't know. Is that like so, something you guys see also? Uh, yes, but I, I'm, I'm going to agree with Anna. But 
flip flop. Um, I do think Sorokin is going to be a phenomenal goalie. I think he's already a very, very good goalie, but I'm not ready to say that he is on the other two's level just yet. Um, not that I don't think he will get there. I do think he will get there. Um, is he having probably a better season right now? Yeah, I would, I would say so. Um, but that being said, uh, I, one thing to remember is these other two guys also played almost two months longer, uh, last year. And they're still kind of getting into, I know, you know, we're already almost a quarter of the way done with the season, but they do have some rust to shake, like some op, I guess the opposite of rust essentially, um, from playing yeah. so much, <laughs> but yeah, but, um, you know, I, I do think Igor has settled down as of recent. Um, he is, I think he's like eight, two and two right now, something like that. But, uh, I, I do, I would have to start him, um, you know, coming off the Vesna and so on, uh, I would bench Sorokin. And then I think I would also cut Vazzy um, because he has been tough to watch this year for sure. And Sorokin has shown enough promise and he is such a good goalie right now. And I think he will. I Listen, these two guys were the two best goaltenders in the KHL, right? They were one and two. They were the guys everybody was talking about. Um, they were the guys who everybody wanted to see. And now they're doing it at the NHL level. And I think not only are they doing it at the NHL level, but they're doing it for two New York teams. And I think that mm. is incredibly important. These two guys are going to be staples for these teams in the, for the next 10 years, 15 years, who knows how long. So I think it's going to be a very, very interesting battle to watch. And um, yeah, I mean, I think they're both two fantastic goaltenders. So I don't think you can go wrong with either answer. I'll give you snaps. That was, that was good. Thank snaps you. Was good. I got sentimental at the end. Yeah, that was good, Cody. Snaps. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, um, yeah. yeah. Do you have any follow up? Um, no, um, no follow up there, but, but I did want to ask a Rangers related question as well. Um, from an outsider looking in, uh, for us, you know, Rangers fans, which player would you want most on your team from a skill and a star power standpoint at this point in their careers out of, uh, our young kids in Alexi Lafreniere, Capo Caco or Phil Hedl? Mm. I think Johnny's going to know what I'm going to say. I think Johnny Hedl. Has- I already know. No, I think she's going to say Lafreniere. I oh, think I am yeah. going to say Lafreniere just because I am a little bit biased. I mean, he's a Ramuski okay. kid. He played for Canada in the World Juniors. You got you to love the kid. And so mm-hmm. I think we've seen little hints of how good of a player he can be. And the Rangers have tried him in so many different positions in the lineup. It's clear yeah. that he's able to like – fit a lot of different roles. I like him on the kid line right now, but if needed, he can play in their top six. He can play with their big guys as well. So I think in the long run, he's the player that I'm looking at to be the most well-rounded player. I like Hedl right now. I think right now Hedl's the one I'm looking at, but long-term, I got to go laugh. I think laugh's going to be a good player in this mm-hmm. league. I think I, it's going to take him to my ears. <laughs> another season to another two seasons to reach the ceiling that I see him reaching, but he can get there. I mean, he was great to watch in juniors back in the day and sometimes you see those players that you remember seeing in their junior hockey career they have something else going on and it takes a while for them to find that same magic in the nhl but i it's gonna happen i have a feeling yeah i actually told our buddy the brat pack like months ago that if i were to ever start a troll account i would do the laugh pack because i love 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 that yeah i love laffy so much but also like you know i was talking about it with my friend kyle that i went to the game with last night and we were kind of saying like it is such a shame that he's just going to miss out on so much money in his career because of the team he's on. I'm kind of curious of your opinion though, Anna, because you know, everyone thinks a little differently. Like when you get drafted to the NHL, you obviously want to win, but you also want to establish, you know, a long-term career, make a lot of money and, you know, set yourself up for life. But you know, a kid like this just turned 21 playing on, you know, playing in New York city as a, as a young kid, a bona fide superstar in the future, but, might not ever get that number one overall eight million a year, nine million a year if he sticks around. Like, what would you? And this is going to be you're going to be such a you know hockey person answer like team first, whatever you know that kind of stuff. But like in reality, what would you want? Because I feel like there are a lot of people that are different. You know, like some people would not want to sign back with the Rangers and take that nine million a year because he could right. get it. He could get it other places. So, you know, what would you think about that? 
I am going to give a very hockey answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> from playing the sport, but it's there's very few players in this league that get the opportunity to spend their entire career with one team and become a core part of a specific franchise. And I think in some ways that is more special than necessarily just getting those big contracts and just being a part of a franchise, especially if you're a first overall pick, it, it kind of changes the game. I'm taking a look at Nico Heischer too. I mean, he had a, mm. a lot of questions about him. He was a first overall pick. He's the captain of the New Jersey Devils. He's like leading their team right now. He's like the most dominant player all over the ice, in my opinion. And you see how much he matters to this Devils team, such a young captain, but really setting this team up for success, really being such a big part of their nine game win streak right now. That could be like laugh that could be laugh yeah, for the yeah. rangers very very soon and there's something intangible about, about intangible about being a player like he sure about being a player like Sidney crosby also Ramuski alum who got mm -hmm. drafted first overall became a young captain really helped this penguins team become what they were and you see players like the penguins specifically evgeny malkin Sidney crosby chris letang taking these pay cuts to stay a part of this core because just being with these franchises for as long as they've been i mean they shaped a whole generation. This was like the players that I grew up watching, Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin, and Chris Letang as a trio made me fall in love with the sport. And I feel like there's a lot of a lot of kids out in this world where that's their dream when they make the NHL is just to see that happen. And I, you know, laugh is following in Sydney's footsteps right now, right? I mean could be laugh Kako Fox as the next Crosby Malkin Letang. Who knows? So mm -hmm. I think I would stay. I know. I know that's like simpy, but I'm going to no, stay. No, I mean, that was a good breakdown, though. It's, you know, like you, you made really strong points there. Like it, it is it, also it's New York City. Like, you know, it is. It is. And like, how lucky are you to play for an original six team in the NHL? I mean, this is such an old league, right? So this is yeah. a league that's so built on history more so than other sports. So it's very special to be able to play in the best city in the world in yeah. New York that's as old as it is. F and rights, AD. You got one more, one more each. Is that cool? Uh, yeah, or, let's do it. Anna? You want to go first? Or you want me to go first? Um, yeah, I'll go first. I got a fun one for you. So I know you're a big country music fan. Um, so <laughs> Dan Brown, Luke Combs, or Thomas Rhett, which one are you going with? And there's only one right answer. It's Luke Combs. There's no way Combs that there's too. another right answer. I'm sorry. I like Kane Brown as well. If you say Thomas Rhett, that's objectively the wrong answer. <laughs> Is it? Dude, are you Thomas Rhett, Cody? I love Thomas Rhett, but I was going <laughs> right to I was, I was say Kane Brown. No, I, was gonna I say like Kane Brown. Brown. I do, but Luke Combs is just a lyricist. I actually, I actually am not that into Luke Combs. Not that I'm not that I'm not into his music. I'm like not ingrained into it. Like I, I haven't listened to him much. I need to. But I do love me some Thomas Rand and Kane Brown, but Kane, this Kane is, is hot. Like, this is stadium country, though. Like, <laughs> um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. Stadium country, unfortunately. I'm more of like a 90s country gal. So I'm a yeah, very really? George Strait old school country. Okay. Um, my old school country is Lee Bryce. That was my guy. I like that. See, that's a better answer than Thomas <laughs> Rhett. I'm sorry. I like Thomas Rhett, but I feel like he's like borderline. Like Thomas Rhett hate is real here. He's borderline pop music at this point in my Yeah, opinion. hey, nothing wrong with it. I loved country in like high school and to this day, I, this is this is post high school maybe though. Um, my favorite country song is When It Rains It Pours, Luke Combs. That song is electric. I don't know if it you was way you after high school, Johnny. We were fully in college. That's why I said it might be after high school. I wasn't, Johnny, I wasn't sure of the time. Were you in high school four years, four years ago? Eight years. Eight years ago. Holy fuck. That's a long time. <laughs> Almost going on ten year ten year uh, reunion. Um, but yeah, I would say that's my favorite country song. What's your guys' favorite country song? That's a tough one. I'll let you go first, Anna. Cross my heart, George Strait. Um, I don't even know. Oldie it. but a goodie. It's so cute. It's such a good song. Give us a line. Well, I'm, I'm not. Gonna sing I it. send you singing videos all the time. Set, set, uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm not my show. I'm not singing it. No, no, no chance. You should look it up though. I want it to be played at my wedding. So it's mm. a cute song. Cute song. I think mine would be beautiful every time. Lee Bryce. I don't know. I don't know that song either. Oh my <laughs> God. What's yours, Johnny? Oh, I wait. Just said <laughs> we, you, do what, you do what I do when Johnny speaks. It just like goes right just, over your head yeah. and you forget about it and move on. Yeah. In one ear, out the other. Very true. All yeah. right. So, my last question for you, AD, is when will Mika Zibanejad get the credit he deserves and be notified as a top 
five center in the NHL? When? Um, do you think, or do you think he's okay? Maybe top top five could be a stretch. Top seven, maybe. Top seven. I mean, I mean, he's becoming like, and this might be a little biased. I think he's become a top five power play threat in the league. He is. And I think Mika Zibanejad is a very, very talented player. I think top five is a stretch. Top seven is maybe like, it depends on what the Rangers do heading forward, right? So like the Eastern Conference is just becoming so, so tough. Like all of these teams are making so many moves. They have so much depth. There's so many young teams. So you're seeing contenders and teams that are like just kind of being irritating for these established teams that weren't before. So it's tough for me to say, because I think Zibanejad could end this season as a top seven center in the NHL, maybe, but that might not be the case next year or the year after, but that doesn't go against his playmaking ability. It just goes against the environment and how tough it's becoming specifically in the East. Mm -hmm. That's a good answer. I'll I'll accept that. Um, But yeah, I mean, ESPN ranked him as seventh this year. They, They ranked him 16th overall. That's solid. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's all we got um, for you, Anna. Anything you want to plug before we let you go? Um, yeah, you can find all my stuff at NHL.com slash fantasy. Listen to the NHL Fantasy on Ice podcast where I talk more about Elias Sorokin. It dropped earlier today. And thanks for having me on, guys. This was so fun. Let's do it again. Yeah, you crushed it. You'll you'll be welcome back. And you didn't chirp oh. me that hard, which I'm surprised about. You, no, I'll, I'll you give you the open floor here for a minute. Say what you want to it miserable working with Johnny? <laughs> Was it, can I give you my actual tea, John? He's like way too nice. I get worried about his feelings, you know. Like I try to chirp him sometimes. Super uh, sensitive, yeah. Yeah, he is. He sends me his like videos of him like singing in his car all the time. <laughs> same, same. Bad. It's really so, weird. He sends them to you too. Your mess. Yeah, he, I don't even have him. On, I don't even think he has Snapchat. He's married. So you delete Snapchat. <laughs> He just can't have fun. He's not young. Do you text oh, him these yeah. videos? You save them and text. I don't them. actually send him. Johnny. Videos. Oh man, he he texts our group chat videos like. He he's got some issues, but you AD know, has been requesting he could be delicate the one little flower. Wait, if if he, Johnny <laughs> sends me a video of him saying that, I will sing on the next time. <laughs> it it is funny though. I will say I like we met. We did that show for two weeks, and like after the show, Anna Dua and Annie May and I felt like three best friends. Like, we, so like we, shout we, out we literally talk like every day. Yeah, shout out mm-hmm. Annie May and Julie and Jill and everyone listening oh, from that show. Mm-hmm. Um. This turned oh, yeah. from like a chirp fest into like a simp session, John. <laughs> I know. I know. All right. Yeah. Let's just, uh, we'll let you go. We'll cut you short. Um, we All love right, you. Thanks, Thank Anna. you for coming on. And we'll have you back on soon. Thanks, guys. We really want to thank our good friend, Anna Dua, for joining the show. Always fun talking to her. Definitely going to get her back on throughout the year to update us on fantasy, individual players, teams, all the trends that are happening in the league. But it is the time for our weekly draft. And Cody, do you want to talk about? Underdog fantasy before we go into this draft. Yeah, we can. And also, I, I want next time Anna comes on, I, we just need her to be a little meaner to you. Like, can't you? You don't talk a big game more. in the chirp department. Yeah, yeah. She's definitely got to uh, grill you a little more. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, no, underdog fantasy is a, as you know, wonderful fantasy sports option. Uh, they have daily pickums, they have uh, really cool fantasy tournaments where you can win a lot of money. If you use the code Blue Crew, they will match your first deposit of anywhere up to $100. Uh, so definitely, you know, take advantage of that. And they have really cool multipliers and things like that where you can win a lot of money. I have a friend who just uh, threw in a $20 bet and walked away with 800 bucks. So wow, definitely, uh, yeah, he he needs to treat me to a steak dinner. No, oh, but, yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so use the code uh, Blue Crew, all caps. And uh, back to you, John. I also don't call me John ever. John. I also <laughs> I also do underdog plays for almost every Ranger game. I post on Twitter on my Instagram story. So if you want to ride the picks, like feel free to do that. I do like the three player multipliers, so I throw like ten to win sixty. You know why? Because um, you're a coward and you can't do the five player. I'm too scared. It's just I know. Uh, yeah. it's like, like I said. Yeah, I am a coward. Yep. Uh, okay, draft. Do you want to pick first, or do you want me to pick first? We're doing. Why don't we tell them the alcoholic beverages? Favorite non-alcoholic beverages. Um, I will go first because I'm afraid you're going to take my first overall pick. I I will act. There's no way I take your first overall pick. I promise you, unless you're as childish as I am. <laughs> Were you going to say Fanta? No. Or Mountain Dew? No. Okay, me neither. Um. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. With my first overall pick, I'm going with something I can't live without: coffee. 
Oh, that's I wasn't even thinking that far. That's a good one. Coffee is a good one. Shit. I would I would pick that one. Do you write these down or you go off the cuff? No, I go off the cuff because I'm yeah, smart. Same. All right. My first overall pick, and I'm gonna get judged so hard for this. I already so know. So am I on my next pick, but it's fine. Shirley Temple. Stop. I'll dude. never I'll outgrow you. I love your old I'm, bot mitzvah girl. I'm laughing right now. I'll never outgrow a Shirley Temple. I probably order them like three times a year if I go to Hibachi with my sister. Like I, I am a child at heart still. Like I, I love a good Shirley Temple. Like I'll never outgrow that. All right. Yeah. I don't think it gets worse than that pick. <laughs> but um with my second pick, I'm gonna go with kombucha because it rocks and I love uh-huh. that shit. Um Peach Paradise. You ever have you gotta try that flavor. It's it's like you know those peach ring candies? That's what it tastes like. It's so good. Um No, I don't know that. Oh dude. I'll 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 hand deliver you one next time I see you one. All right, I'm trying to think of my second one now. Uh this can kind of go into I'm getting I'm just giving very You said water? No, 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 no. I'm getting very unhealthy answers. I would say okay, so root beer is my favorite soda on the planet. I actually like I had to quit soda um my first year of junior hockey because my, my billet mom was like you can't play college hockey if you drink soda with every meal. Like you can't live your life like that. <laughs> you I would totally I, get like two slices of pizza, a, a diet root, root beer, and like garlic. Not even diet. No, no, no. I, I, I like literally drank root beer with every single meal. I think until I was eighteen. Like I never drank water. Like, and and my parents, if they're listening to this right now, are gonna be embarrassed because like people came over to our house and we never had water. Nah. Like, literally soda or Gatorade. Like that was it. Like that was our house. So for me, okay. like also like I. I, there is nothing I love more on this planet than a root beer float. Like, bury okay. me in, bury me in one. Um. All right, that's fair. All right, last one's tough because until you said that, I was gonna say Diet Coke, mm-hmm. but like now I'm thinking like a good old like smoothie. Like smoothies mm-hmm. are banging. Mm-hmm. Like, Ooh, you know, like I'm thinking like milkshakes. That's what I was thinking of, like a milkshake or Black like a milkshake smoothie. at the diner at midnight. Like a cookies and cream friendlies milkshake. You ever? Oh, wow. Um. All right, I'm just gonna go with a smoothie because I don't, I don't even know the flavor. I'm just gonna go with a smoothie. Yours have all been like healthy, and mine have just been like. <laughs> I mean, if you want to call coffee healthy, you can. Um, yes, but yeah, sure, sure. All right, so I'll go with, I'll go with a, I'll go with a good old dude. Did you ever have those Wendy's like that Wendy's growing up? The Wendy's the frosty cream, no, the cookies and cream blaster shake. Never it was like the greatest. They they like discontinued it. Oh really? It was when I was in high school, man. It was crack in a cup, like it was so <laughs> good. Honestly, yeah. oh man, that that would for sure be my number three. So I'm gonna go with that. Whatever it was called, the Wendy's cookies and cream shake. If any of you know what that thing was called, please DM our Instagram. Thank you. I gotta go black and white shake for me, um, but I do want to give an honorable mention. But like, there's oh, no I'm not saying body armor, body armor. It's just like I, I. It's not like my favorite. I just drink it because like it's a good alternative to Gatorade. You know. Okay. 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 Um. But I'm thinking like what I treat myself to, like what I, mm. you know, not like I treat every, myself to kombuchas. Not everyday life. Um. But like, there's no better vibe growing up on Long Island, like hitting the diner with your friends at midnight, getting a black and white shake, some fries, a grilled cheese and bacon. Like that was like the thing. Um. But honorable mention, I think there's nothing that slaps more than the. Blue raspberry cherry combo smoothie at a movie theater. You're, you're actually nine. Okay. <laughs> nine years old. Like insane. Um, all right. So, so that being said, that's our draft. And now let's go to this week's slate of games. We got oh, our West funny. Coast trip. Um, yeah. We got our West Coast trip. We we might be sleeping when these games take place because I they're all be. at like you 11 p.m. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So the Rangers have the crack in on Thursday at 10. Uh, they have the Sharks on Saturday at 10.30. And I think that's it this week, right? It's just those two. That's it for the week, yeah. yeah but they okay, have more so- of the West Coast trip next week. But this Yeah, week, that's all right. It. So what's your predictions for the, for the two slates this week? Kraken are good, I mean, man. Kraken are good. Yeah. yeah, I actually don't know if I love... And they play us well every time we play them. Yeah, last year, Keandre had like that last-minute goal, right? And then Foxy the, in, in Seattle, Foxy had like that five. We were down goal. two to one, yeah. and then we scored two. Yeah, but but I will say, the one thing I will say about this trip that is slightly different, we have a lot of time this week. Yeah. Like, they're probably already there, and they have all week to get acclimated to the West Coast and, you know, and so on. Like, they don't play until Thursday. So that's different because I feel like we don't usually deal with that. But um, all right, so what's your picks? Kraken also don't play till Thursday. So yeah, but that doesn't affect us. Who cares? 
Well, no, they'll be just as well rested though. Mm. Um, did you say a score? No, I know I dished it to you, you but uh, oh. if, if we're going score, I think the Rangers are finally turning a corner here. Um, and I am going to say they're going to win both these games about time. I'm going to go Rangers beat the crack in three to two. Cause I think it's going to be close. And then I think they're going to beat the sharks five to two. I like that. The sharks game is interesting. Cause you know, obviously we all know how the last sharks game went Rangers lost an overtime at home. Um, yes. But I'll start with the cracking game. I think the cracking game is going to be the first shootout of the season. I see that game going to a shootout. Oh, no. First Avalanche shootout was a shootout. Colorado was a shootout. Colorado was a shootout. Not the first shootout of the season. But I see that game going to a shootout. I just think both teams will play a little tighter on defense. The Kraken aren't as you know, talented up front as the Rangers, so they're going to have to tighten it up a little bit in their own end. Um, and I just see the Rangers not necessarily struggling. I think they'll get a lot of chances, but I don't know if they'll finish. So Do we win I see the that shootout? Game. What's up? Do we win? Yeah, the I'll take the Rangers in the shootout all day. I'll I'll say four three shootout win for the Rangers. Okay. Um, and in the Sharks game, Halak's getting one of these games. I don't know. I which was just going to say to you something about that, but don't don't say anything further on on him. Just yeah. tell me your score. I'm going to say the Sharks games like three one Rangers. I'll, I'll okay. say Rangers in both games as well. Okay. Okay. Cool. Love that. Um and. One, why do you think Halak's getting one of these games? I don't think I don't think he should. They're not well, playing till Thursday. E- Igor's gonna be real rested, rested, um, rested, and then they play Saturday and Tuesday. He should actually, play all three make, fucking games. You make a good point. I was just thinking he'll get one of these games, and maybe with that rest, Igor gets the back to back, the Anaheim LA back to back. Yeah, but but maybe I, I feel like one of those I feel games. like it should be Igor, Igor, Halak, Igor, so that the back to back split. But I, I totally think Igor should play both of these games. Like the Ranger, dude, we've said it, man. They need to find consistency here. Yeah. Like they need to do that with Igor. Um, what I was going to say to you is, is Halak ever going to get his first win? The guy's 0-5. Um, it, it, it's been tough for him, no doubt. I'm sure he's incredibly frustrated. Um, he hasn't played bad lately. He's just not playing good enough to like put this team on their back. And a, a perfect example of this is, if Halak was in net against Arizona, we would have lost that game because they would have scored a couple times to start the game, and I don't know if we would have came back from that. Yeah. He'll, he'll get his first win. I mean, he's due. He's due. Okay. But you heard it here first. That's pretty much all we got for this week. Um, I do want to say one thing, though. For anyone who's into documentaries, I don't really watch a lot of them, but I'm sure you're actually going to watch this, Cody. Jonah Hill is putting out a documentary i think tonight monday night on netflix it's about his therapist it's, it seems really cool he like i didn't even know about that yeah it seems it seems really cool and i love jonah hill and it seemed just like a jonah hill obviously you know had a lot of like you know not necessarily issues but went through a lot throughout his career and yeah. you know you know totally. the weight, weight gain weight loss all that stuff and he takes us in his therapist's mind talking about how to deal with a patient like him i think i think it's kind of like a cool perspective so yeah, that is really interesting. Dude, it's not easy being an actor. Like, no. uh, losing... I mean, Christian Bale's done it. Uh, you know, Brendan Fraser's done it. I, I mean, Jonah Hill's done it. It's really, really tough, like, going through the the weight loss, Ups the weight down, gain, yeah. the, the, the toning. I mean, it's no joke, man. Like, if you want to talk about commitment, like, hey, the, these guys and, and girls have, you know, commitment to, to these roles and, like... It, I, I, I'm very interested in that because it definitely gets unhealthy at, at points. You know what For I mean? Sure. So like, um, yeah, that, I mean, that's fascinating. I think everybody should definitely take a listen to that. I'm just looking up the name of it. Um, it's about his therapist. It's called Stutz. Stutz. Oh, oh, yeah. okay. Okay. I did see something for that. I didn't watch any trailer, but yeah, I'll, I'll take a, I'll give it a dabble. Yeah. Like about body insecurity and mental health and stuff like that. So yeah. just super interesting perspective. Um, awesome. Just going to give that a shout out. Um, but yeah, that's that's going to wrap it up for this week. We love you guys. We'll have an episode next week, and then we're going to take Thanksgiving off. So send in your questions, whatever you want. We love answering them. Thank you guys as always. Hit us, Cody. LFGR, baby.